Hello everybody, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Trinity Stamps video. Today we're going to be making a gatefold card, but let's talk about what we're using first. We're going to be using the Polar Party stamp set along with the matching dies. It's such a cute little image. I love those little penguins on top of each other. We're also bringing in the dainty scallop circles. These are wonderful. There's rectangles as well, and they're both just great. I feel like they're great staples. So let's do our stamping first. I have some Express It cardstock that I put into my Mini Misty, and I'm taking each of the pieces that I need each of the stamps and we're just going to stick that in there close the door of our misty and then we're going to ink this up with some blackout ink by ink on three because as you guessed it with the express it cardstock and blackout ink we are going to be doing some alcohol marker coloring I'm going to use my Olos I've been using those a ton lately um, haven't forgotten about my Copics but I do really enjoy the Olos. So I've stamped that a couple of times to make sure that I have a good stamped impression and then I'm gonna just take a little creative liberty here. We're going to use some teal for our penguins. I just think that is fun. It's a fun option um, because typically what you'd color your penguins like a gray or a black but I thought I would like I said take a little creative license and do some teal because I wanted it to match the paper that I've chosen for my background. And this image is actually super easy to color because we have a polar bear and polar bears are white, right? Um, and so all you have to do is add a little bit of shadowing and shading to that. So you saw the colors that I put up on the screen and I'm going to bring back in that BG 2.4 to blend that out. But these penguins just have my heart just like singing. And I'm thinking I want to try coloring them with a lilac next time. I think that would be super fun. Our other color that we're bringing in is some pink. So as you see, I've got some RV 0.2. And we'll did some for the cheeks. And originally when I put that down for his cheeks, I thought, oh, I went a little overboard. But it ends up um, evening out. I'll bring in some RV 0.4. Um, that's my darker shade. And then we'll blend that back with our RV 0.2. And then, like I said, polar bear. Super simple. So I've brought in some CG1. You don't have to do... You don't have to fill in all the area. Leave some white space because when you leave that white space, because he's a polar bear, it's going to give that illusion that he's, you know, obviously mostly white and you're just, um, just adding in your shading. And then I'll go back over that CG3 with some CG1 to blend that a little bit. And then for the beaks and their feet, we've got Y0 2.3 and Y0 2.5. And there you have it for our image just super simple and I did decide to keep our happy holidays mostly white so I've just brought in the CG um, one to to do the happy holidays because of the colored cardstock that I am bringing in so I'll bring in our matching dies tack that down with a little bit of mint tape and we'll do the same thing for the sentiments and then we're gonna run this through our die cutting machine and we'll set those off to the side now I'm going to do a little stamping on my background and my background is a piece of this turquoise cardstock. It measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that's the full front of an A2 sized card. And I've grabbed the snowflakes from our polar party and we're going to do some embossing. Now I should have just done a little stamping covered with embossing powder, did a little more stamping covered with embossing powder, but I guess I thought I was cutting some corners and I did all of my stamping then tried to cover it with our embossing powder and our embossing powder is a wow white puff twinkle so it doesn't stick to all the places and I decide instead of scrapping this that I am going to work with it because snowflakes aren't perfect anyway right I mean well they are if you look up close but um, in a snowstorm it's not going you're not going to see all that all that pretty snowflake like perfectness right <laughs> So we're going to work with it instead of scrapping it. And then I'll run this pink piece through my die cutting machine with our dainty scallop circle. You'll see that I have both of those pieces put into my makeshift splatter box. I have brought in some picket fence distress paint, a little bit of water, and then I'm going to splatter that all over both of those backgrounds. Um, the water will just kind of thin it out just a little bit, and I'm using a very thin paintbrush. And then I'll clean up my mess just a little bit there. And then you'll notice I have the Trinity Gold palette on the side. I'm going to use the silver and we'll do a ton of splattering all over both of those backgrounds with it as well. So I think that kind of masks the fact that the snowflakes weren't stamped perfectly. And that was user error. That was not the stamp. That was my fault. I should have, like I said, stamped a little, covered with embossing powder, and then kept going. 
I am going to bring in my heat gun because that picket fence distress paint takes a minute to dry. So I'm going to heat that so that we can move on to the next step, which is scoring our paper. So this is our, our base. And I'm going to score it at 2 and 1 8 on this side and 2 and 1 8 on this side. And this piece measured 5 and a half inches by 8 and a half inches. This is how you're going to get your perfect gatefold. Because if you add 2 and 1 8 together with the other 2 and 1 8, you get 4 and a quarter. So that is the front of a gatefold or the whole front of an A2 size card. So that matches perfectly in the center. And now we'll just cut this panel in half. So once again, we'll have to cut that at 2 and 1 8. And then we'll have those perfect pieces to be able to attach down to each of those front panels there. We'll just use a little bit of liquid glue to do that. I meant to grab my crafty glue friend because that stuff is awesome, but for some reason I did not. So um, just grabbed what was right in front of me. And we'll do that with the other panel. But I think that looks fun. So the silver splatter is nice and shimmery, and then we have that white paint, and we do have some of the embossing. Now I'll glue down my image to my pink dainty scalloped circle. And then now we have to attach all this to the front of our gatefold. So we're going to do that with some foam tape. I'm going to do the same thing on the back of our happy and holiday and our happy holidays. We're going to put some foam squares on the back of those. And then we are going to put some foam squares on the back of our circle, but you only want to put it on one half. If you put it all over the back, you're just going to close your gatefold and you won't be able to open it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I've done it before. <laughs> so just make sure that you choose a side, pick left or right. I chose left and I put all of my foam squares on that left hand side and we'll peel off all of that release paper and then we can stick this down to the front of our card. Same thing with our happy holidays. Don't go over the where you have your cut line, otherwise you'll just close your card. And that's going to do it. That's how easy gatefolds are. They're super fun. And it's just a, a different way for a recipient to receive a card, really. Um, you know, open it up a little bit differently. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye, everybody.